Hi, this is Fish and welcome to Fish Picks. Today I have a new unboxing quiz to share with you courtesy of an incredibly generous care package that I've received from Jason Gabriel. I'm going to be going through all of the answers at the end, so strap in and see how you fare. And do stick around until the end because you'll have a chance of winning any one of these locks featured today. So this is the first lock and it hasn't been gifted to me. This one is on loan because Jason wanted me to have the opportunity to try my hand at the infamous Master Lock 19. This monster laminated lock was patented in 1968, the year before I was born, and was sold along with a 10 year warranty for the princely sum of $43. Now you'll be lucky to pick up one for less than $200. It's uh, 7.5 millimeters wide, by 115 millimeters high, that's just the lock body, and it has a 13.5 millimeter diameter shackle. It's key retaining, it's a six pin lock, has a nasty paracentric keyway, and unlike many of the modern master lock models, it has excellent tolerances, making it a real challenge to pick. I've had no luck so far. So I have three questions for you on this lock. One, how much do you think this weighs? And I'll accept your answer in kilograms, pounds, or you can guess how many master lock number threes you'd need on a pair of scales to balance this out. The question number two is that the keyway here is the mirror image of another lock manufacturer brand. What is that brand? And number three, for the real lock sport historians amongst you, who was the inventor of the master lock 19 whose name appears on the patent? The second lock Jason sent me is this very impressive looking Mindy hardware lock with its distinctive Jaguar embossed on the lock body. Now you'll notice that the curtain here reduces the likelihood of shimming and while it looks like a high-end security device, in fact the lock is cast in zinc and the shackle isn't hardened. But the question this time has to do with the keyway and the locking mechanism which is composed of a series of stepped sliders. In fact, Bosnian Bill demonstrates how you can pick this lock in episode 1043, in which he uses the broken off tip of a Peterson straight tipped pick. Uh, it's a fascinating design. And my question is this, inspired by an Asian building design, what is the name usually given to describe this key or keyway? Next, we have a 50 millimeter laminated Stanley lock. It's a six pin model from their 24 seven range, has a 9.5 millimeter shackle and a removable core and is composed of a series of serrated security pins. And with this in mind, what is it about the design of this locks core, which makes it such a tricky pick? And here we have another laminated lock, but this time a brass marine commando, another really chunky lock. Jason must have remortgaged his house to afford just the postage in getting this box of locks to me. This has an eight millimeter uh, boron alloy shackle. The rivets sit in chamfered holes so that the lock won't just fall apart if they're cut away and the plates are interlocking. We have a five pin core this time with all serrated key pins and serrated and spooled drivers. So two questions for you this time. Number one, on a scale of zero to 10, how strong would you describe the shackle spring for this model? The higher the number, the firmer the spring action. And number two, the shackle on this model can be removed, but how would you go about doing so? To continue the theme of intimidating lock designs, here we have an American A2010 puck lock, which came with a few spare core fixtures as well. It's a six pin design and is considered to be a significant improvement in terms of security when set against the older 2000 series. But can you explain why? Next, an A series A527 round bodied lock it has a double ball bearing locked shackle, has serrated key pins and a mixture of serrated and spooled drivers. It includes an anti-bypass plate, has a screw in the shackle cavity to allow for the removal of the core and is yet again a robust lock design. But Ace is a store brand, not a lock manufacturer. So which company actually manufactures this model and how is their equivalent lock different from this one? 
I'm really happy to now have this brown ABUS 7240 in my collection as well. And I've already included the acronym ABUS in the last Locksport unboxing quiz. So the question this time is very simple. For most 7240s and many of the other ABUS range, you'll find two trademarked words or phrases, one stamped on the lock body and the other on the shackle. What are they and what do they stand for? Lock 6 and 7 are both American 1100s, but unfortunately I only have this one to show you because the other one I've been attempting to pick open in my lunch hours at work and failed to bring it home with me for the weekend. As you can see, this is the long shackle variant, while the other one was a silver model with the standard shackle length. So the question I'm going to ask you here is to identify the year of manufacture for this lock. And here are some close-up views which you might find useful. The last lock that Jason sent me is this seven pin ultimate adversary lock, which came with a bag of additional grub screws, springs and various kinds of security pins. Those of you who have followed this channel for a while will know that I'm a real advocate of training locks, particularly for those just starting their lock sport journey. The ready access to the individual pin stacks without having to gut the cylinder and the ability to switch out bitting profiles and driver pin configurations makes this a really versatile and economically intelligent way of developing your skills. And I did once own the six pin version of this same tool, but I gave it away as a prize a while back. So I was thrilled to receive this one. If you want to pick up one of these, then you can find them all at www.learnlockpicking.com. And so the final question in today's quiz is this. The seven pin version of this training lock is, as I've explained, called the ultimate adversary lock. But what are the names of the five and six pin variants? So hopefully you've all had a crack at each of these questions. And without delay, let's take a look at the answers and see how you did. The Master Lock 19 weighs in at 1.2 kilograms or 2.65 pounds. Now, a Master Lock number three is 0 0.19 kilograms, so that means that the Master Lock 19 is the equivalent of 6.3 of its smaller cousins. The paracentric keyway, which has given me so many problems, is actually the mirror image of the keyway you'll find on the Ruko brand, as you can see here. And the inventor of the ML-19, the man whose name is on the 1968 patent, is D.J. Foote. The name attributed to the keyway of the Mindy hardware lock is a Pagoda keyway. The feature of the 50mm Stanley laminated lock, which makes it a challenging pick, is the fact that it comes with countermilled chambers in the core, which are designed to catch against those serrated driver pins. On a scale of 0 to 10, the spring tension of the Marine Commando lock is a resounding 0 because it's a dead core lock. And in order to remove the shackle, you need to use a plug spinner to turn the keyway counterclockwise. Unfortunately, I don't yet own a plug spinner to put this to the test, but I really like this hidden knowledge gem. The American 2010 is an improvement on the 2000 series in at least two ways. First, it's cast in steel rather than zinc. The old model was easily melted and therefore compromised uh, using a plumber's torch, for example. And in addition, Master Lock did away with a small retaining screw within the mechanism, which makes it much more resistant to pull attacks. The company that manufactured the ACE A527 round bodied lock is actually Brinks. And the difference between this and the original Brinks version is that this has only five pins, while the Brinks is a six pin design. The two trademarked words or phrases found on the ABUS 7240 are titanium, which may be found on the lock body, celebrating the lightweight but robust materials used to cast the model, and nano protected, seen here on the shackle, which is designed to draw our attention to the fact that this lock has weather resistant qualities. And now we come to the dating of the American 1100 lock. In 2013, Master Lock brought about a new coding system constituted from a series of numbers and alphabetical letters. And my understanding is therefore that this would have been made on the 23rd day of 2020 by an operator with the initials MW. 
But please do let me know if you think I've got this wrong, because I've seen a few different explanations of these codes floating around on the interwebs. And finally, the name of the five pin model in the ultimate series is the ultimate practice lock, while the six pin equivalent is the ultimate challenge lock. And all three, including this one, the ultimate adversary lock, are a really great investment if you're looking to pick up a new training tool. So this brings us to the end of today's unboxing Locksport quiz. Thanks again so much to Jason Gabriel, not only for his generosity, but also his patience, because I've received this haul several weeks ago now, but wanted to complete the impressioning series before I made this one. I hope you enjoyed this week's video, and if you'd like to be in with the chance to win one of the locks featured here today, then just let me know in the comments what your preference would be, and I'll randomly select a winner in the next week and pop it in the post to you. So thanks for watching and until next time, take good care.